Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I am working on a Generac LP5500. It's a dedicated propane unit. And this unit came in with a no start condition. And we're gonna jump into figuring out why that is and see if we can get it running. So a quick shout out to James Condon. He has done a video up here, here in the top corner there. He did the 3250 LP version of this. And the LP5500 is not a unit that I normally see. It's actually kind of a rare unit now, and for good reason. The Generac stopped support of these a few years back just because there was a lot of problems with the demand regulator. And James ran into a similar issue with that, and I believe that this is a similar issue too. There are other issues going on, but we'll dig into it. The gentleman that is giving this to me to repair said that if it's going to be too costly to repair, that he would rather just go and get another one. So I don't want to get too deep down the rabbit hole with this, but I believe I know what is going on. We need to see if it makes power and figure out what's going on with the regulator and also the linkage to the propane carburetor. And I've already started to work on it a little bit. Pardon the mess here in the garage here. It's kind of messy. We just got some stuff done to the house. So the stuff is a little tough to get move around but the cool thing is that the guy uh, has been very good with keeping all the parts uh, manuals and the owner's manual and all that stuff so that was cool I have already had to take apart the air box but I couldn't even get that off because I had to cut the thumb piece here the thumb nut in order to take it off because it basically was it looks like it was sat outside for a long time here unfortunately so yeah it's got a lot of cleanup to do but let me get you set up a little bit better on the tripod use that and we will start to disassemble this and see what we could do first thing we're going to check is if it's got enough oil it's a little low but we'll definitely change that so we at least have enough oil to get it running. Looks like the hour meter's display is broken. I don't even know if, uh, if that even works, but everything else seems pretty clean. Moving on. So I was looking at the linkage to the choke plate here, and this is operated by, see if I can get this in frame, you see the arm move. So this is to start it, and then you would push down on it to prime it, start it, and then move it to run so you can no longer prime it. Let's see if I can get that in frame. And the pinch bolt right there was not adjusted properly. It's loose and I'll have to take off the top cover to adjust that properly. But now we're just going to shoot some starting fluid down there. We'll connect the light and see if it makes power. All right, this is great news. We have power and it will run on starting fluid. Now we're gonna have to take the top cover pieces off, take a look underneath and see what's going on there. But also we're gonna need to remove that demand regulator and take a look inside, see what's going on with that and get it on the bench. So let's do that. So what we have here is two assemblies. We have basically the kill switch and the choke assembly. And this bolt here was loose. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to, that's off. 
run and this should set it to choke but if this was not adjusted properly it wouldn't close the choke plate all the way but looks like we've got that adjusted to what we need we'll go ahead and remove this demand regulator vacuum line this is the line going to the carburetor okay a little bit of dry rotting there let's get this on the bench Alright, we got the demand regulator on the bench. Let's go ahead and remove it. This has already been taken off from the intake side from the tank. So this is at tank pressure. I did see some dry rotting here a little bit. That might be a problem. We'll have to replace that. We'll do a soap and water test. Let's take all this stuff off. A lot of corrosion. We're going to take these off first. I believe this is the high side and then this is the low side. Got to be careful of the diaphragm. Diaphragm looks good. There's the problem. the piece right there fell out of this plunger part same problem that James found out all right well that's an easy uh, straightforward fix what we're gonna do I do have some contact rubber cement that we'll put on there to hopefully keep that in place Yeah, I could see that the rust, well, you guys can see that. Definitely corrosion. I'm gonna pull the low side because this is, action is not very good. So let's go ahead and do that. careful it looks like there's water in here yeah this seals bad I don't think I'm gonna be able to save it there's too much corrosion here Ugh. That's not good at all. Yeah, that's it's waterlogged. That's no good. All right, well, that means now we're going to have to see if we can find a rebuild kit and Hopefully they can still, we can still rebuild this because this alone, as a new part, is $250 or $300 depending on where you get it from. And I know that's a pretty expensive piece, so let me do some research and check that out. I took the regulator apart a little bit more and yeah, it's, it's bad. That's the, looks to be the low pressure side here. That's the high pressure side. This is the low pressure side. There's another diaphragm inside. And this is the inside cover. And you can see a lot of corrosion. Water's been sitting in there. Now, I've been looking on the interwebs to try and find a rebuild kit. And normally you can get a rebuild kit for a lot of these demand regulators. You just get the diaphragms, the seals, 
and the gaskets and you pretty much got a brand new regulator ready to go uh this is a garrison demand regulator that i got from u.s carburation that i did in another video for converting a gentleman's machine over to propane and this is the kit that they give you with the motor snorkel and you can get the replacement diaphragm and gasket kits for these very cheaply and very easily unfortunately generac i don't know if this is even made by generac i doubt it they probably contracted with another company and didn't put their name on it but then put it on their machines and james i was talking to him off camera and he made a good point he said he thinks that you know generac realized a while back that they didn't want anyone monkeying around trying to repair these things and made the replacement part very costly and that was the only way to prevent people from going in and doing this kind of work and just replace the part well 250 dollars is extremely rich for a demand regulator that can go anywhere from $40 to $80, which is a lot more reasonable than $250. I'm gonna do a little bit more research. I'll even try to call Generac and see if I can get anywhere, but I'm not really holding my breath on that. See what we can do. Uh, the machine works. So even if I don't do, I can't fix this here, the option for the customer is either gonna to be to get a whole new $250 regulator and the machine should work just fine or i could try to retrofit the machine with a demand regulator like this and then i cannot eliminate that top knob here because not only is it the kill switch it's also the choke mechanism here he would still have to use that and then if the demand regulator was somewhere on the side on the machine somewhere they would still have to press the primer bulb in order to get it primed but it is possible. I'm just not sure what he wants to do or if he even wants to spend the money. And that, in the small engine world, is oftentimes what it comes down to. Cost and time. I really want to fix it, but not sure what he wants to do. So let me reach out to the customer. And in a few seconds, we'll see what direction he wants to go with. So I did call Generac Order Tree, and they it's basically where you can get the parts directly from them. I gave them the, the serial, the model, and the part number. And yes, they do have this part still in stock, $301.99 US dollars plus shipping. And guess how much shipping is? $45 to my house. $45 for this little thing. And the lady, her name's Casey, very nice. She is actually going to call me back to see if there's any way that they can find a diaphragm kit for just rebuilding this regulator. I'm not holding my breath, unfortunately. But I'm more pissed off at the shipping cost. It's $45 for that little thing. I do logistics as a day job, and I know that it doesn't cost that much. Most of these big companies get large discounts from UPS, from Federal Express, USPS even, and at the most, something like that should only cost about 15 to 24 dollars at the most they're definitely taking a, a high markup and she actually slipped a little bit their business model is a percentage for the shipping cost it's a percentage of the total cost of the part so whatever that equates out to be one well, that's just ridiculous yeah they're covering on their costs every company does it but that's just robbing you blind i'm sorry 45 dollars to ship something this small is stupid in any event, I am waiting to hear back to see if you can find a demand regulator rebuild kit. I just don't think that I'm going to find it, but I just figured I'd share that. That's quite ridiculous. We'll see in the next segment if uh, I was successful. I talked to the customer. Obviously, $301.99 plus $45 is way too much for a regulator. He's not going to want to go that route. I did give him the option to retrofit a Garrison KN regulator. Uh, to this machine since it does produce power and just needs some tune-up But obviously there's some time involved for me to have to go and retrofit it to install it to tune it to test it and uh, He doesn't want to go that far. So The only other option left is to see if Generac calls me back Yeah, right if there's going to be a diaphragm kit rebuild kit that I can use but I'm not going to hold my breath on it It's it sucks. <laughs> I wanted to really fix this machine. So I'll wait a day or so, see if they get back to me. If not, then probably going to get stalled on this. But it's too bad. This uh, generator still makes power and still can be used. It's just cost and time. That's just 
oftentimes what kills you. So until the next segment. A couple days later and Generac actually called me back. I was actually surprised. And the customer service rep and her supervisor got on the line and they we actually went through, I asked a whole bunch of questions. You know, did Generac make this internally? Did they buy it from a vendor? Maybe there's an external vendor that made it for them that maybe it's not the, that's a Generac part number, but maybe Imco or Beam or some other company made it. They did go look through it and they're, they just weren't able to find anything else further. Now, if I was a dealer, probably had a little bit more support and they might have been able to dig a little deeper but pretty much confirm what I already knew is that the you'd have to buy the whole regulator you know there's no rebuild kit which is kind of stupid now I understand why these machines failed in the market when these things came out well over 10 years ago you know you just don't saddle the customer with a $300 part and you cannot repair or replace the wearable items inside it just makes no sense and cause that part to be so expensive to where it's not even worth it dollars and cents wise. So you can buy a 4,500 watt a open frame inverter generator from Champion delivered to your door for like $450. So it just doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean I'm going to try to fix this now because I've essentially gotten this machine for free. Uh, he is paying me a diagnostic fee uh, for my time for looking into this. However, he was going to go and throw it out at the scrapyard. I didn't really want to see that happen because one, it still makes power and two, it still runs. I'm not going to be able to sell the generator in its current con condition unless I buy that part. And I would likely just, I would probably lose money considering how the generator market is now. I'd barely be able to get a hundred dollars for it, to be honest. So $300 for the part plus, you know, shipping is just makes no sense. I am going to use this stuff or the right stuff to to make a new gasket around that diaphragm that was all waterlogged and then try to see if I can seal it up and see if the engine runs. But I wanted to at least to try to put a conclusion to this video. I still feel a little defeated anyway that I'm not able to repair it back to its factory OEM uh, status, but you know, you win some, you lose some. So let's see if we can get this diaphragm fixed. Here we are a few days later. So what I did was I did reinstall the demand regulator and I wanted to show why this thing failed to begin with. It's a very poor design. So if you look through there, you see that vent hole? That vent hole has to be there for the low pressure side and on the primer side of the regulator. But because it's facing upward, if you leave this machine out in the rain, the water's eventually gonna get in there. And that's exactly the reason why that regulator failed. Here's a picture of all the internal components exploded out so you can see what's inside it. There are three main diaphragms and the one diaphragm that has the biggest issue with the missing gasket and a small tear is actually for the priming function of the regulator. So when you push down on the knob here to prime it, uh, the, purge the air from the system, that is the diaphragm that operates that function. and that has been that you, you need it you need it in order to be able to purge the air out the smaller one is the vacuum lock off which is operated over here at the carburetor well really more of a propane injector venturi and this little hose here it uses vacuum suction when you are choking it you actually will close off the choke plate here and that vacuum will pull that diaphragm in and open up the low pressure side of the regulator to start feeding the engine propane. And finally, the thick rubber diaphragm there is actually on the high pressure side with a very large spring, and that's what regulates the high pressure down to low pressure. And usually you don't have a problem with those since those are usually sealed off. All right, here's my test setup. We're gonna try to start it up where you have a 5,000 watt load heater to basically bring this up to full load. Voltimeter will look at voltage first, and then we'll also check out the total harmonic distortion. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to, how easy this is going to be able to start, just because we have that issue with the diaphragm. Let's give it a try. Gas turns on. I'm not hearing it pass by, so this rotates to first position, which run. We'll run this all the way to choke. I'm going to push this for 
three or four seconds. Once the fire, but then I'll go and move it, not to run, but to like halfway in between. Well, that was a very good test. I was not expecting the engine to be able to support a half a load, much less a full load, and it ran really good. I did have to make a couple adjustments to the speed of the engine, but it held very well, and so did the voltage. Well, I think this machine has deserved an oil change, so let's go ahead and do that.
All right, guys, this is where I'm going to end the video here. A few quick notes. Uh, so I ran out of straight 30 is basically what happened. And I have to go and get some over at the store. I've been using it for all the push mowers coming in. Uh, the generator has specific oil weights uh, by, by the temperature and much more narrow ranges than you would typically find on a small engine for like any typical portable generator. 40 and above is straight 30, 0 to 40 is 10W30, a multi-weight, and then anything below zero is a 5W30 synthetic. So I'm gonna wind up changing that oil off camera. I do apologize, I wasn't able to get that. Uh, a four, another forward on the spark plug here. According to this, it has an F7TC torch. Not really, I don't like torch in general. They're just not really reliable, but this had the torch in it. I did put in, according to the manual, it says uh, an equivalent champion is an N9YC. I did put an RN9YC in there. R stands for the res there's a resistor in there. And that is not the right one, but it's close. But I am going to go and order the right one just so I, so it's the right one. And honestly, the the spark plugs on a pro dedicated propane generator are not dirty at all. You can't get that fuel to run dirty enough anyway. Uh, that... This torch one is probably still good, but I'm just going to change it out for the proper champion. It makes sense that there should not be a resistor on that particular spark plug because when you have a dedicated propane generator, there's a couple things different between that and a gasoline engine. One, the timing is slightly more advanced, and then also you have a slightly higher compression. So if I was to guess, instead of your standard 8 to 1 compression ratio, you're probably looking at a 10 to 1 or a 12 to 1 for a dedicated propane engine like that. So the head is uh, has a different part number than your uh, typical Generac 389cc that you would normally find on a GP5500 model, for example. I did a little bit more research. So there is an aftermarket regulator that is compatible with the LP3250 and the LP5500. It is a Beam T60, which you can see up here. And I did see that on eBay. It's a little bit cheaper than the OEM. However, there would still be some work involved to adapt that regulator to be bolted up to where the control knob is on top. And the reason why the T60 is specific for a, an aftermarket option is because it has the vacuum lock-off diaphragm feature in that regulator like the OEM one does. The customer paid me for my time and my diagnostic, and this generator is pretty much mine now. I think that it doesn't really have a lot of resale value. Maybe if someone was to take it for 100 to 150 bucks and then they can use it until it dies, that's probably the best thing I can expect uh, considering the condition of this machine. But uh, I'm going to see if James still wants to take this machine. He most likely will when he's in my area next time. I just wanted to make sure that I was able to cover off on all the details. Uh, it was actually a fun rebuild project. I got it to work. It ran just fine. I just don't know of its longevity. And if it breaks down again, there's you're, you, one would have to go and buy that new regulator. And it's just not cost effective, unfortunately. Uh, thank you to the customer. And thank you to everyone for watching. If you guys, if any of you guys own the 3250 LP or the 5500 LP, let me know. I've gotten pretty uh, close with all the specs and all of the pieces behind it. I hope that uh, if you guys have any questions, I can be able to help out. I know James has worked on the LP3250 as well. You could check out his uh, video up here one more time. And again, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you guys on the next project.